So what we see here are four represented volume elements of a particular composite that is subjected to a tensile deformation. And you see from a small represented volume element to the largest representative volume element, the particle diameters are exactly the same. So the question is, what will be the effect of this RVE size on the mechanical response of this particular composite? Will it change the Young's modulus of the material? Will it also change the yield strength of this material? So this is what I'm going to be studying in this video. So let's back and relax as we explore this problem. So again, start with the smallest of the representative element, and this is what we see here. So it's a particular composite. It's being deformed by applying a tensile deformation here, and you can see instantly that there is a dominance of a shear band or a deformation or a fracture plane around the structure, and then it's deforming that way. So what we want to ultimately get to is to get the stress strain data based on this result and compare it across the different structures. So the strategy that we're going to take is first we're going to construct the present volume element, apply loading onto it, and then we generate a result and then we repeat that for all the four represent volume elements that we want to study in this video. So the first thing is how do we create the domain? You can do it manually but I'm going to use a code that I developed which is called Gen Particle 3D and this will help you create the domain. It's a MATLAB based code. So if you get into MATLAB and get access to the code which again if you want there will be the link in the description set in a video that shows you exactly how to get hold of the code so if you look here so it's actually in particular 3d there is this computational options file which again is where we specify what we want to do so right at the top here the material mat material type model type i want to define is a particular composite there are options for creating a voided composite or a macro capsule based composite something like a syntactic form but in this instance we're going to work with a zero which is a particular composite the dimensions we're going to start with is the very smallest type so i'm going to make it six by six by six and then i'm going to leave the diameter range which is the range of the inclusions in this case which is a particle of three so the volume fraction we're working with is 20. the particle type we're going to work with is a sphere there are options for spheroids and ellipsoids and the particular color when we plot it within matlab would be a default jet color in matlab the smallest space between the two closest particles will be 0.001 the dimensions of these systems are in microns for the system we are looking at the particle phase of silicon carbide made, made from a matrix of aluminium and the other thing that we just want to add here is that i'm going to allow the model to be trimmed so that i can reveal internally what is going on within the structure so there's a 20 percent trim on the edges of the fiber so that we can review what's internally and i think that edge effect is important in assessing the behavior of this composite so once we've created that then i'm going to do right click here and then run and once we finish so this is sort of result that you generate which has again just three particles within this representative volume element and the way it is designed is that the particles are locked within the structure so this is why it's important when we start plotting we have to trim off so that we can review what's going on internally within the structure so if you look at the output that we have here so the first one here so let's just look at the first case i've run it a few times so this is the output that you generate and within this output you've got this abaku simulation which is a python script that's going to help us to look at the data so if we put this outside of matlab essentially it gives you details of what the python script is i'm going to run this within abacus to generate that result so what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy the link where that code is then i'll go back to abacus so i want to run the model so what do we do so far run script and then i'll put the link that we have and then i open that particular model that we're looking so what it does now is going to show it and trim it up and then we'll see the model that we're interested in so if we go to material model it shows us the model that we're working with you know with all the parts and everything represented properly so if i just open the result here and then go on to the part module onto this section so under the section assignment i can just tell it okay why not hide the metrics or suppress the metrics and then you can see so it will show us clearly the particles within and then the metrics is sort of the envelope the transparent envelope that captures everything so we're happy with this clearly the next thing i'll resume that as well so i want to mesh so if we mesh this model so i can select accept this default that is given me okay and then i can then assign a certain mesh type so this mesh would have to be tetrahedron and then we ask it to mesh so we're happy with this mesh so then the next thing is we're going to have to specify properties for the metrics so i'm going to allow the metric so by default the metrics comes up with um, just elastic properties so i'm going to add plasticity to the model so that plasticity for aluminium will be 250e to power 6 and then the plastic strength so you can then 
have 238 or 6 and 0.05 okay so we could have different plastic strain basically that looks like this and so we, with the metrics now we have it as being elastoplastic so let's create a loading step a static general is normally accepted for this simulation and we can then what we're going to do is to apply how we're going to apply load on this structure so i'm going to query one of the corner nodes which will be this corner nodes so this corner nodes has a property of this so I collect, copy that, and then I can now go back here and on that tools reference point, and then I paste that. But I'll just make it a little bit different, so this becomes six. So that point is just somewhere a little bit away from that. So I'm going to have to create a set for that reference node. So within this assembly module, I'm going to create a reference point set, so our piece set, and then we we'll select that because we're then going to use that set to instruct the model on what next to do. So there's a few set we need to, so let's say the X front set, we need to do that. And I'm going to switch this to faces and switch this to by angle so that when I hover across it, select all the things on the face. And then we can then turn this to the back and select the back as well. So another set, which will be X back. So again, I hover that, it selects all that. And then the other ones that we need will be the base and the back and the Z back, so the Y base. So again, I'll do that. So this will be the Y base. So again, I hover on the Y base, select all that. And then finally, we turn to the back. And then that will be my Z back. So on that set, so Z back. So I hover there. And then that gives me my Z back. So we can then switch this to a set module get the asymmetry view so you could see it shows the different sets that have been selected in this model all nicely highlighted so we're happy with the sets so i can then create a history output because i want to track certain parameters so this will be my reference point history output and with this reference point history output it's going to be attached to the reference point set and i'm going to track the reaction force in the one direction and the displacement in one direction because i would then use i would then use that to get my stress strain data now the constraint equation we need so i'm going to call this x constraint so it's a kinematic constraint equation linked to a star equation so one the set name is the x front in degree of freedom one degree of freedom one to the reference point set minus one so what this basically implies is that you're deforming the front set based on the information on the reference point set so if you move the reference point set the front set will move equivalently so that's why they are so basically displacement of front minus displacement of this equals zero that's the canonical equation so if you're interested in learning about this then look at this video where i've shown this principle in detail using a porous material so once we've done that so there is now a connection between this and this a kinematical correct connection so when we load here this will be deforming as well again the importance of that is that then we can track what's happening exactly at this point in terms of this reaction force and displacement and that's why in our history output subsequently we are tracking what's happening at that reference point as our history variable this is again tracking everything going on in the model so we've got all that then the other boundary conditions we then need to do is to specify what happens at the x back as a roller set so it's an initial boundary condition based on displacement so i'll look at the set so x bar i'm going to constrain it in the one direction so y base as a roller support so again i'm going to base that on the y base highlight where it is okay and it's going to be deformed in the two direction and then the next one would be z back as a roller so that will be in the back direction and it will be constrained in the third axis. So this way we have fixed the system so that one eighth of a quadrant would be what we are looking at here. So you're applying load at this point and the system is deforming that way. So the last thing is to put our extensor tension. Extension displacement as a loading history and we will apply it on that reference point set and it's going to be in the one direction and it was 4.8 in millimeters so one third of that will be 1.44 will be the displacement microns that will be applying here so that we impose a 30 percent strain on this model the last thing is just to set our model so this will be lve1 so for example so that's the name so it's basically the model name and i'm looking at tensile loading and then we'll continue and then we can run we we'll submit the model to run and then we'll observe our result so this is the sort of result that you generate after running the model and then we can 
apply it, look at it so basically it's moving in this direction you get this really excellent deformation associated with this so i'm going to say okay use this which is remove selected and i'm going to switch it to material so that it's easy and then i'll select this so all the materials that are fiber particulates are removed so we get a structure that looks like this okay so it's held securely at that end held securely at this other end held securely at the base and we get a nice structure that is deforming and then we can so again it shows you what we have so you've got this clear region where the system is being deformed nicely in this direction so if we open it up and just study what you have here so we can cycle through the front and back and then see basically what's going on in the structure so if i replace everything and then i could also do the same just cycle front and back through the structure to see inside internally how this shape zone is being transformed so it's sort of forming from the top getting arrested by these particles and then sort of moves around it to now come back at this other end so you see the next thing we need to do is to look at the history output so if you look here under the history output and i'm going to track reaction force one and displacement one and plot that so instantly it gives you a really nice result of the force and the displacement so we want to then operate on this by putting this into excel so i'm going to go plugin excel utilities current plot and then this will export this data into an excel file and i've already prepared a template which you can use to to operate on this data to see what is going on so this is sort of data that you find so this is time reaction force one time displacement one so i'll now copy that and then we'll open up the excel template that i formed so this is a cell template that i formed so when you paste the data that we have then it gives you so basically what we have here is the time the reaction force time and displacement in one or x direction then you end up with a graph that shows you what's happening so stress and strain and how is the graph formed so there's some parameters the actual length of the rv is 4.8 and that's because it's been trimmed down from 6 to 4.8 and then that's the effective strength how so if you look at the Young's modulus, how is the Young modulus? So we're basically looking at the linear elastic, the slope in the linear elastic direction. And the strength properties is basically the absolute maximum of the stress, which is in this case. So what is the force? The force is defined as reaction force. So the strength is the displacement divided by the length, the width of the material. So because we're applying, so it's the width that is the gauge length. So if you, again, this spreadsheet will be available for you to use to operate on your model. So if you want to get onto the second case, all we need to do is to go back to our geometry generation system, which is this. So, and we now come in here and say, okay, fine. This becomes 10. So I'm going to work with a distance of 10, 10 and 10. Okay. And then we we'll run the same mode. So we we'll run it. And then it generates the domain as usual like it did previously and once we've done that so we can go and look at 10 by 10 so we've got this different set of scripts so we open back here so this is the script that we want and then we we'll go back to run that particular script based on this bigger rv size and then it will go through the whole process as well and generate the domain so this domain is a domain that is of a bigger rv size so if you go to material bigger rv size and we can do the same for the third and fourth case i've done all that i've extracted the stress strain data for so let's just look at the result that we generate so the first thing is for the bigger diameter the one that is 10 by 10 by 10 after trimming it it becomes 9 by 9 by 9 and then we get the result of our simulation looking like this so then i now move it to a 15 by 15 15 and after trimming it you get this dimension which is again accurate and you get the result and then we now went to a 20 by 20 20 if you're trimming it 10 percent you get the dimension of 16 by 16 and you get the result so you can carry on with as many of these simulations as possible but the idea is that to get bigger rv size and generate the result so what is more interesting is that when we compare all this what do we learn so looking at the comparison the first thing you'll see is the graphs all put together so we've got from the smallest rv to the biggest rv and what you then see initially is that in the linear elastic direction they are sort of almost arriving at sort of the same result there are some little variations in the linear elastic direction the strength properties vary you know with increasing rv size leading to higher strength properties the post yield behavior again is different depending on the fiber so there's a lot of sensitivity as to what's going on in the post yield section of this uh, of this structure 
And so this is the kind of information that you generate by just looking at this. So just to put some numbers, so I went on to look at the data that we extracted previously. So for example, the young modulus of, of the very smallest RV was 58. And then we now went on to the bigger IVs of 112, 62, 1105. And it keeps varying. So just to get a sense of what it is. So again, I use an analytical method, which is which so I look at two analytical approaches. And these analytical approaches are basically the rule of mixture, the inverse rule of mixture, half inside equation, and the CCA method. Just to kind of see what analytically you get based on this. And these are the properties of the materials that we're looking at. This is half inside shape factor and orientation factor. And we get different kind of predictions so but these are sort of the ones that are more in the range of what we want the inverse rule of mixture and the half inside sort of so between 90 and 110 is a predicted value for this material depending on the parameters that you're using so we'll find that you know with increasing lve size you're probably going to the range of the sort of numbers that are acceptable for you know that are lining up with the analytical prediction that we have here in terms of the strength the strength are sort of around 250 to 300 the material has an analytical predicted strength based on the strength of the matrix of 250 but clearly by addition of the particulate that strength will be going up and up and up there has to be an objective way to calculate that but i'm using the analytical predicted strength of the matrix which is what usually limits how this the, the matrix will be so that's a baseline that we are building from 250 upwards but then there are other ways you can calculate that strength so and we end up with some interesting so the key information for this is that with increasing rv size the strength keeps going up and up and up and it begins to stabilize more around the 300 megapascal value so rv size is definitely having an influence so just to look more closely on that data so what we have here is that you can see this is the analytical predicted young's modulus which is 112 based on half inside if you're using the inverse rule of mixture it's runway around 85 but i'm just looking at only using half inside for now so then all the rv size you look at them there's a bit of oscillation in terms of what they predicted young smoke list is giving you but we find that you know with the increasing rv size the young smoke list begin to approach what you get from analytical prediction stance of your strength you get about, about the same kind of thing so 250 is the smallest because that's defined by what the matrix is happening is doing however with the addition of the particulate that value should be going up and up and we find that again you know with rv size being biggest we get a strength that is biggest and so increasing rv has a way of increasing the strength of the material so as a take home what we learned here is that rv size does influence the behavior of the particulate composite and you need to do this sort of iteration to get to a point where you've got rv size where the strength and the young modulus properties are not sensitive to changing rv size of course there's more to be said about this you know and i do encourage you to look at the literature around this where you can see other factors and influence this sort of result for example the bonding strength of the party to the metrics how it is prepared and other than allowing damage to develop in the material all these things have a way of influencing the behavior if you want to learn how to look at the shear response of this material then this is the video i'd like you to see if you want to see more about this sort of modeling from a manual point of view then this is the video that i'd like you to see thank you for interest in this video and i'll see you in the next bye bye <music>